Today, I want to talk to you about a man who drew a bow and shot an arrow at random. 1 Kings chapter 22, verses 34 and 35. Now a certain man drew a bow at random and struck the king of Israel between the joints of his armor. So he said to the driver of his chariot, Turn around and take me out of the battle, for I am wounded. The battle increased that day, and the king was propped up in his chariot, facing the Syrians, and died at evening. The blood ran out from the wound onto the floor of the chariot. Those verses record the sad and prophesied end of King Ahab of Israel. He was one of the worst kings ever to rule over the tribes of Israel. The whole chapter is fascinating. It describes how Ahab persuaded King Jehoshaphat of Judah to accompany him into battle against the Syrians. Before they went into battle, the more religiously inclined Jehoshaphat asked if there was not a prophet that they could hear from, perhaps to speak the wisdom of God to their circumstances. In response, Ahab brought out his prophets for hire, all 400 of them. They also spoke with a unified voice, Go up, for the Lord will deliver it into the hand of the king. They even used a dramatic presentation with one of the prophets putting on an iron ox pair of horns and thrusting the horns like a mighty ox against a helpless victim. Now, though this dramatic display assured Ahab and Jehoshaphat of victory, there was something that didn't sit right with the king of Judah. He wanted to know if they had a prophet from the Lord God of Israel to hear from instead of those 400 pagan prophets. Ahab admitted that there was such a man named Micaiah. But Ahab didn't like him or his prophecies, which were always negative towards Ahab. Yet at Jehoshaphat's insistence, they brought him in. Perhaps we should say that they brought him out, out of prison. Because Ahab didn't like Micaiah or his prophecies. The king threw him into jail because of all that. So, you can only imagine the drama when this faithful prophet, I imagine him to be in rags, looking like a wild man, and smelling terribly. He began to speak before these two kings. A member of the royal court whispered into the prophet's ear, warning him to agree with the 400 other prophets and to not make the kings angry. But Micaiah insisted that he would only say what the Lord told him to say. Then came the message. It was delivered, no doubt, in a mocking and sarcastic tone. Go and prosper, for the Lord will deliver it into the hand of the king. Now, his words were essentially the same as the 400 pagan prophets, but his tone and his manner made it clear that his message was completely different. It was as if he said, This is what you want to hear, O king, and I'll say it to you, but we both know that it isn't true. Now, Ahab yelled back at the prophet Micaiah and demanded to hear the truth. The faithful prophet then told Ahab, that he would die in battle, and that these 400 prophets were actually inspired by a demonic spirit sent and allowed by God for the purpose of bringing judgment to the overripe Ahab. When they dragged the brave Micaiah back to his cell, he screamed out that the fulfillment of the prophecy would prove that it was indeed from God. Ahab heard it. He tried to forget it, but he couldn't get it out of his head. He went into battle determined to cheat the prophecy, announcing his coming death, and to show that it was not a true word from God that came from Micaiah. So Ahab disguised himself in the battle so that no one would know he was a king, and he even tricked the gullible king of Judah into becoming a target instead of himself. Your friends, it didn't work. In the midst of the battle, a certain man drew a bow at random and struck the king of Israel. This seemed to be pure chance. I mean, after all, the text describes it as a certain man. We don't even know who he was. And he pulled a bow at random. But it struck the king of Israel, Ahab, as if that arrow was a sin-seeking missile. God orchestrated the unintended actions of one man to bring about his judgment. In God's plan, there was nothing random about the arrow. 
It fulfilled his promised word against the best efforts of King Ahab. Now, to his credit, Ahab died bravely enough. Our text tells us that the king was propped up in his chariot facing the Syrians and he died at evening. Ahab faced the end of his life bravely, dying propped up in his chariot to inspire his troops. But when his death became known, the battle was over. And Ahab's battle against God was over. He, like his army, had decisively lost. Friends, think about this with King Ahab. What good did his rich palace do for him now? What good was it him for him to be a king against God and his word? What good was it for him to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Who would not rather be Micaiah in jail than Ahab in the chariot? God guided a seemingly random arrow to accomplish his ultimate will and to show that it was and would always be better to be a faithful Micaiah than a wicked Ahab. So let's trust in God's ways and his word, and we can do that today.